A central theory informing quality e-learning design courses is called cognitive load theory. Now this short little cartoon uh, demonstrates how cognitive load theory works. Essentially the underlying concept is that our working memory um, has a very limited and finite capacity and that learning requires maximal use of our limited working memory. So as you watch this um, cartoon, this basically shows a person that is watching an e-learning course on a computer and on the computer screen there is a um, conceptual map of some concept. At the same time that he's, uh, he or she is watching the computer screen, um, the person is also listening to um, a lecturer speak about the concepts that are shown on the screen. Now the person is, um, while paying attention to these, begins to process both the words um, that he's hearing from the speaker and the images that he's seeing on the screen. Now these are processed in, in what are considered two separate channels, two different parts of the of working memory inside our brain. There is a portion of working memory that is dedicated to um, the processing of visual information like concept maps, diagrams, pictures, etc. Um, and then a separate part of the working memory known as the, uh, the phonetic scratch pad that processes words and these words could either be written text or spoken word. Now again the phonetic scratch pad and the visual scratch pad together are called working memory. Now working memory is again a very limited space. In fact it's so limited it can only hold seven plus or minus two small chunks of information. Now small chunks um, are uh, limited data such as digits. So a person can remember seven plus or minus two small um, small items of, of information like, like num numeric digits and they only can remember them for a very short period of time, 30 seconds to two minutes. Now in order to process this information and put it into long-term memory, that is to learn the information for a long-term period of time, the person has to um, create connections between existing information and be between the data that was held in working memory and create schema. And the schema are complex patterns of information that are stored in our long-term memory. Long-term memory, unlike short-term memory, um, is vast and can hold very complex data. So again, the long-term memory um, holds memory in the form of schema, which is complex um, connections between various data. And the long-term memory is both vast, um, can hold vast amounts of data, and very complex data compared to the very finite um, working memory.